صلوات على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Tonight is the eve of the 21st of Ramadan, the 1445 after the Hijrah. It is the night of the Shahadat of our first Imam, Amir al Mu'mineen, Imam Ali alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Let us begin the majlis. I would like to invite Brother Shajad Zaidi to the front for recitation of Salam and Marcia. Please welcome him with a salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Say another salawat. <coughs> Shall I recite a salam? Allah <coughs> salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. But before I recite the salam and the salam, I will recite. We have a translation for it. Thank you to Brother Jafar Sayyid for all the brothers who have been helping with the translation of the Urdu poetry that we are reciting here. For their sehat wa salamati, please recite a very loud salawat. I will just begin with. One um, stands in the praise of Imam Ali alayhi salam. We don't have a translation for it. But in this poetry, the poet is talking about Hazrat Misa. We are all familiar with him. He was the lo lover of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And he was punished because of his love for Imam Ali. And his tongue was actually removed. So the poet is talking about that incident and the meaning of that poetry is that doesn't matter what happens, the name of Imam Ali will continue. Shall everybody will remember and everybody will praise Imam Ali alayhi salam. Recite another loud salawat. <coughs> Sutune dar se misam Bayan de te hai Sutune dar se misam Bayan de te hai Sutune dar se Misam bayan de te hai और रहेगा जिक्र अली हम जुबान देते हैं रहेगा जिक्र अली हम जुबान देते हैं और अली की जाए विलादत का जब सवाल आया अली की जाए विलादत का जब सवाल आया Kaha khuda ne hum apna makan dete hain Kaha khuda ne hum apna makan dete hain Sutune dar se misam bayan dete hain Rahega zikr ali hum zuban dete hain Drud padi Muhammad wa'ala Noha Kuna hai Zainab e Muzhtar Ali ke baad Noha Kuna hai Zainab e Muzhtar 
علی کے با کوہرام ہے مچا ہوا گھر گھر علی کے با نوحا کنا ہے زینب مزتر علی کے با محراب غم زدہ ہے نمازی کدھر گیا محراب غم زدہ ہے نمازی کدھر گیا ویران ہے رسول کا ممبر علی کے بعد نوحا کنا ہے زینب مزتر علی کے بعد بیوائے اور یتیم رہے انتظار رہے انتظار میں کتنے غریب بیٹھے تھے در پر علی کے بعد کتنے غریب بیٹھے تھے در پر علی کے بعد کلسوم اپنے بابا کو جی بھر کے دیکھ لو جی بھر کے دیکھ لو سہری نہ ہوگی ایسی میسر علی کے بعد سہری ایسی ہوگی میسر علی کے بعد صبر و نقے ہی ہو گئی رخصت علی کے ساتھ صبر و نقے ہی ہو گئی رخصت علی کے ساتھ سونا کچھ اس طرح سے ہوا گھر علی کے بعد سونا کچھ اس طرح سے ہوا گھر علی کے بعد یاد علی کے عشقوں نے دیکھا 
ہلالئی یاد علی کے عاشقوں نے دیکھا ہلالئی کیا عید کرتے آل پیمبر علی کے بعد نوہ علی کے پڑھتی تھی زینب جگر فگار نوہ علی کے پڑھتی تھی زینب جگر فگار حجرے میں روز شم جلا کر علی کے بعد نوحا کناہ ہے زینب مزتر علی کے بعد زینب یہ کہے کہ سوئے مدینہ چلی زفر زینب یہ کہے کہ سوئے مدینہ چلی زفر ہم کیا کریں گے کوفے میں رہ کر علی کے بعد نوحا کناہ ہے زینب مزتر علی کے بعد سلوات پڑی محمد والا محمد و علی محمد صلوات فاتحہ پڑھنے والا محمد و علی محمد صلوات اکیس ویں کی رات قیام کی رات تھی اکیس ویں کی رات قیام کی رات تھی سادات پر بلا کی مصیبت کی رات تھی محشر کی صبح تھی کہ شہادت کی رات تھی بیٹوں سے بوتراب کی رخصت کی رات بیٹوں سے بوتراب کی رخصت کی رات تھی کہتے تھے دل دو نیم ہے ایسا خطر ہے آج بے زادرہ خلق 
से अपना सफर है बेजा दे राय पल से अपना सफर है शबर मेरे यतीम को शफक से पालियो तुम अपने नाना जान के घर को संभालियो शबीर पर बला कोई आए टूटालियो देखो कड़ी निगाह भी इस पर डालियो देखो कड़ी निगाह भी इस पर न डालियो इस काल हाज चाहिए तुमको के खुर्द है बेटा मेरा हुसैन तुम्हारे सुपर्द है मेरा हुसैन तुम्हारे सुहर्द है हे मेरे जान शी मेरे दिलदा अलविदा हे नूर एन अहमद मुख्ता सौंपी तुम्हें रसूल की सरकार अलविदा है नूर एन अहमद मुख्तार अलविदा शबर जो मेरे दोस्त हैं उन सब से हो शिया मजलू में कर बला मेरी जैना से होशिया मजलू में कर बला मेरी जैना से होशिया ये कह के गम से हाल जो होने लगा तवे बेस्तर पे उठ के बैठ गए शाह दस्तगी बोले हुसैन से ये माँ में फलक सही बेटा बड़ा अलम है के आबा सभी बेटा बड़ा अलम है के अब आप के सुपुर्द मेरा लाल पाम है भाई न जानियो ये तुम्हारा गुलाम है भाई न जानियो ये तुम्हारा गुलाम है भूल पड़ गया सैयद अबरा मर गए लो जान शीन अहमद मोता दीन रसूल पाक के सरदार मातम करो के हैदर करा तुम करो के है दरे कर गए रोई जो बीबिया तो पिसर पीटने लगे अपास नन्न हाथों से सर पी लगे अपास नन्न हाथों से सर पी लगे इक्कीसवीं की रात
Jazakallah to all the reciters. Uh, may Bibi Sayyida Fatma Salamullah Aleha accept the Pursa. Please recite a loud salawat for them. Fatiha. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من المؤمنين رجال صدقوا ما عاهد الله عليه فمنهم من قضى نحبه ومنهم من ينتظر وما بدلوا تبديلا صلوات Dear brothers and sisters in Iman, tonight we have third and final majlis of series of these three majalis about the life and legacy of Amirul Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu was salam. No matter how much we talk about him, we still can't do justice with his life and his legacy. A man who was larger than life and who was best of this ummah, Islam never produced a single believer superior and better or even equal to Ali ibn Abi Talib. The 
this is something which entire Muslim Ummah will agree. If you don't challenge them, if you don't confront them, if you don't intimidate them, if you don't touch their sensitivities and just objectively if you put this question that who was the best product of Islam? Who was the best student of Prophet? The most comprehensive Muslim. A man that who was leader in every field of life. A man that who was most capable and comprehensive when it comes to knowledge, then practice, then his social contributions, his family contribution, his community organization, his community contribution. And then when you put all this question in front of them and ask them who was it, they cannot bring any other name other than Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu was salam. Don't ever think that since they believe in those khulafa and those companions of Prophet, they will say that, for example, the first khalifa or second khalifa or third khalifa were more knowledgeable than Ali. Or they were wiser than Ali. Or they were better husband than Ali. Or they were better father than Ali. Or they were better follower of Prophet than Ali. None of them will make that claim. Matter of fact, we discussed yesterday that they don't believe, this is not part of their theology, that Khalifa has to be the best of Ummah. That's not their criteria. That let's see who is the best. A'lam, the most knowledgeable, the most wise, and the best man in entire Ummah should be selected as Khalifa. If that would be the standard, then we never had those Khulafa. Their criteria is that anyone who gets selected by the elders of community, if elders of community choose someone and they think this is going to serve better under these circumstances and he would do this job better than others even if he is not superior even if he is inferior than someone else they will say perfectly fine it's okay you don't have to go and find the best of best you just find someone that who can do the job. So in that sense, the Ahlu Sunnah community is not that idealistic as we Shias are. As a student of theology, I am explaining to you. They are not idealistic. They, are, they will say we are just practical people. When you are looking for a resident alim for your masjid, you don't go and bring someone who is most knowledgeable man, for example, in the entire Shia community. 
you just find someone that who can do the job to them khalifa is just like that like a resident alim like a mufti even not mufti because for mufti they know that if they had some difficult questions they will go to mufti later they need a politician they need an administrator they need someone that who is a community organizer they need who can deal with every you know situation and with those political challenges so their criteria for khilafat is different than our criteria for khilafat that point is clear to everyone because we need to be very clear in our concepts we she us our criteria for khilafat or imamat is different we are looking for someone that who sits in the seat of prophet and does everything what prophet was used to do in the same way at the same level except one thing that he doesn't receive any new revelation and he is not making a new sharia that's the only difference other than that this man has to do everything what prophet was used to do but in ahlu sunnah they made departments they said when we will have questions we will go to ummul mu'minin aisha and we will knock the door and we will say ya ummul mu'minin we have a question khalifa doesn't know the answer and he will go to his daughter and he will say that have you heard anything from prophet in this issue because i don't know or the khalifa would go and knock at the door of ali ibn abi talib and would ask him that here is a new issue we don't know how to answer it so please can you help us and then ali would answer or they will call a meeting of those companions at the masjid and they say oh ashabun nabi please come everybody in the masjid we are having a issue we want to see that if any one of you have ever heard prophet discussing this somebody would raise hand he would say yeah in one of journeys in one of travels or in one of khutbas i heard prophet saying this and that solves this problem they would take it ye chanda karke bhi masail hal ho jate hain this is a way of almost kind of chanda but this is how they were they never claimed that their khalifas were most knowledgeable people even those khulafa themselves didn't make that claim and their followers also didn't make any claim so to them a good administrator a good politician someone who can build consensus within the rank and file someone who can lead someone who can rule someone who can collect taxes he can do the job and he can be imam he can be khalifa and this was the criteria which they kept for some time later on again meaning it became the family business from muawiya to meaning all the way in banu umayya and then in banu abbas all the way until ottoman khulafa so then mongols so then it became the khilafat became a family business so the point is because i had conversations and i have eyes on books and what they have written no knowledgeable man and no honest man whether he is hanafi whether he is shafi whether he is humbly whether he is maliki whether he is sufi or 
he comes from any branch of Islam he will never say that there was somebody who was better than Ali who was superior than Ali who was more competent than Ali who was more comprehensive than Ali if you will ask them they would say Ali was the best and since this is not my topic I need to move on otherwise I would quote you all those sayings of their scholars their ulama who have written it in their books and that's why you see that their ulama have acknowledged that no one among the companions is there that so many ayat of Quran have revealed in his praise or so many hadith of Prophet is there in his praise and books after books books after books have been written about Ali ibn Abi Talib I mentioned 1000 books just in one library of Ibn Shahar Ashob in 7th century now 700 years have gone by more so 1000 books there are books after books written fi manaqibe Ali ibn Abi Talib articles and then poetry in every language you will see Ali is being praised and Ali is being celebrated the life of Ali so without any doubt by any standard and by every standard Ali was the best man in this ummah which Allah and his prophet and Quran had produced that is why in Mubahla when prophet had to bring someone one man to represent all the men of Islam and one woman to represent all the women of Islam and those youth to represent the children of Islam prophet brought Ali ibn Abi Talib as the best man Fatima to Zahra as best woman and Hassan and Hussein the best children of Islam and showed the Prophet so my brothers and sisters that's why we are so sad tonight loss of Ali is not just a, an ordinary loss it was irreparable loss sometimes we use this word in condolences but many times maybe it is not true but at least here in this case the loss of Ali was irreparable loss it was a turning uh, time of Muslim history. If Ali would stay there, if this community would support Ali, if they would stand with Ali, if they would not leave Ali alone, my brothers and sisters, today the situation in the world would be totally different. Totally different. There were five times when Muslims took the wrong turn and those wrong turns actually put Islam and Muslims all on the wrong track. First, after the demise of Prophet, when they gathered in Saqifa, that was a biggest 
mistake which they made then what happened when the this second khalifa when he was attacked and he makes this shura of six people and this shura makes the wrong decision and they don't select ali and they selected usman ibn affan that was another turn in the wrong turn then of course when community didn't support ali ibn abi talib who could put muslims again back on the track and who could bring them on the footsteps of prophet and who could lead the muslims on the path of muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam but unfortunately community of that time was not ready to go back to the path of muhammad now today when we say that many people who are not familiar with history they would say oh why are you saying people that was the first karn the best people of the, that was the time when there were best people and they were not willing to go with ali they were not willing to go to the path of muhammad and they wanted to go to path of somebody else they don't know the reality of muslim history of that time majority of muslims were converts at that time and either they were africans or they were iranis or they were indians or they were from so many other countries they were in majority at that time at the time of ali majority of muslims were new converts the people the countries after countries were conquered in the time of umar bin khattab countries after countries were conquered in the time of usman bin affan look at the geography of islam and muslims when prophet passed the way islam was only in jaziratul arab and what was the population of jaziratul arab even today just look they are the minority of minority of minority of muslims even today arabs are the smallest minority of muslims majority of muslims live in indonesia majority of muslims live in india and pakistan and bangladesh and then many live in turkey and many live in iran and then you look at these tiny arab states and then see at their population so in the time of imam ali the majority were new muslims new muslims don't know the history of ali who was ali i always give this example that our these uh, volunteers or these uh, people like let's say dr ali shah is sitting here or dr shawar if she is sitting there or dr sajad asghar or this brother jafar hasnan or some of those people that who started working with me when we started baitul ilm now if i ask you that everybody stand up and go and tell me who is ali shah and who is dr shawar most of you will not be able to go and tell me where is who is ali shah and who is dr shawar because most of you came much later most of you don't know who were those 20 people with me when i started baitul ilm and who were the one that who were stoned with me and cursed who were cursed with me and who have gone through all that pain and all those problems and issues so my point is i had about 20 or 30 people at that time who were in my core core group but now majority of them 
they are now meaning they retired some of our those people like this brother uh, today we were reciting fatiha for him uh, brother uh, chakpar dr kanji for example and many others are marhum and those who are alive they are now into the age of retirement they are retiring some of them are on wheelchair some are making their mind to purchase the wheelchair and and they are not that active anymore so today you are champion you think you build the betulil you are the one who are mover and shaker you are the one that who is doing everything at this betulil is there just because of me who came yesterday so imam ali was like that imam ali was totally marginalized the government media the government dignitaries the government its media its uh, focus and all these new converts they knew new they knew the people who were movers and shakers governors mayors qazi justice patwari tahsildar record holders these were the people that people knew to them these were the islam and muslims muawiya was used to introduce himself in madina as the family of prophet he was said we are family of prophet and that's why we have right to rule upon you and people of syria had taken it they say they are family of prophet so try to understand history try to understand geography of islam even at the time of saqifa majority of the people yadkhuluna fi dinillahi afwaja after fath makka they don't know who was ali that's why khalid bin walid became the hero khalid bin walid is sword of allah by themselves but la fata illa ali la saif illa zulfiqar is forgotten if ali was not there in badr if ali was not there in uhud if ali was not there in khaybar and khandak islam was done it would not reach to khalid bin walid khalid bin walid would not even get the chance if ali was not there to save islam he is the one who founded islam he is the one who put the foundation of islam he is the one who protected the prophet of islam in uhud when everybody had left prophet muhammad in the battlefield and prophet was dying and ali ibn abi talib comes and he protects the prophet and people were all running on the mountains of uhud so the point is ali was ali only in the lifetime of prophet yes he was right hand of prophet he was center of attention he was leader he was chief he was the most favorite person in the system and that's how people developed jealousy with him and then what happened even in his own life people started now coming to prophet with complaints about imam ali and when prophet heard that people are coming one after another with complaints against imam ali they say prophet who would not easily get upset or angry but prophet got upset and angry and then he gathered everybody and then he used this term man kuntu maulahu fa hada aliyun maulahu who are you to bring these complaints against ali if you believe in me 
as your Mawla, you have to believe that Ali is your Mawla. And these kind of, this behavior is not accepted. Go and make peace with Ali. So my brothers and sisters, Ali's life, the first part of life, I have discussed in previous two speeches. Tonight is the final speech and very important one. We have to have Masaib for his Shahadat at the end and also I need to conclude the theme. The second half of the life of Ali is the half where Prophet, where Imam Ali was living a miserable life. A life when he is marginalized. Life when Ali is uh, being neglected, being pushed into the corners. And zeros are being made hero, heroes from right and left. But the true heroes of Islam, whether they are Ali, whether they are Fatima, whether they are Hassan, whether they are Hussein, whether they are Abu Zar, whether they are Salman al-Farisi, they are being marginalized because they are party of Ali. They are family and friends of Ali. You will not see them in any important position. So this part of the life of Ali, 25 years after the death of Prophet is the time when those three Khulafa ruled. Those are 25 years. And then almost five years, four months and four years and nine months, almost five years of his own Khilafat. So makes about 30 years. 30 years are 30 years of sufferings of Ali. Where Ali suffered, lived most difficult life. When he was being abandoned, when he was being marginalized, when he was being pushed into the corners, when he was being neglected. If it was somebody else, he would get depressed. He may, he would commit suicide. Or he would stand up and make fitna. You know, when we are deprived, even that little small thing what we have, and when we are told that now, just move back and this is not yours, so we make this issue of, issue of haq and batil. And we stand up. And we use every, everything what we have to fight for that little thing and make a big fitna. <coughs> Ali was deprived the leadership. Ali was deprived mehrab. Ali was deprived member. Ali was deprived that uh, imamat and khilafat. But no one can prove, no one can say, even Sunnis don't write that, or they don't say, or Shias, that Ali went out and he created, he made his own brigade. He started some kind of campaign against the government to topple them. Or he did bad mouthing against them. Or he discredited them. Or he went after them. No. For a they say for two or three months, he tried to approach the people in Medina and try to remind them about Ghadir and the promise of Prophet and all that in a very gentle way. And when people apologized and they say, Ya Ali, you came later, they came first. <laughs> that is the criteria. They came first and we gave them the commitment. You are too late. But you are too young. You are young. You have still time. These, this is an old man. So if people out of respect, they have given him the chair, let him enjoy that. How long he will live? 
you are young man your turn will also come so to them these are turns bariya to them meaning the common people don't understand the issues in proper light to them it is a government to them it is chair to them it is iktidar to them it is a power so you lost it today you will get it tomorrow what happens with islam what happens with muslims what happens with the community that is not something what they can understand the common people to them peace and community harmony and community jaldi jaldi aapas mein solve karo bhai ladai jhagda nahi karo chale isne le liya chalo yaar dafa karo tum acche ban jao wo usne kabza kar liya hai chalo usko theek hai chalo allah tumhe sabr dega you know that this is the advice you which you get from almost the majority of community they are not understanding they are not ready to make peace they are not doing the right thing you keep quiet aap acche ban jaye aap bade so ali was made quiet ali said if that is the case go ahead after that they say ali never even brought this issue up this is now here is the here is a lesson for elders and for our youth imam ali when he was denied the opportunity instead of now creating fitna or just feeling depressed and sitting at home and doing nothing or ali goes out and starts digging wells planting trees planting gardens and ali gets into that kind of um, activity amirul mu'minin in those years 25 years actually had more gardens and more land and more wells and more income than many of these other people so when one door is closed when you are denied one position when you are not given something what you were looking for for some reason then don't think this is end of the world then look for something else do something else sometime i receive these uh, things from parents their child wants their son wants to be doctor or dentist their daughter wants to be doctor or dentist and then they take the test and they fail and they don't get accepted then they say hell with it i am not now going to do anything else because they didn't accept me in the exam and i am not going to be doctor or i am not going to be dentist then they lose totally interest in everything that's not the case maybe allah has something better for you so you try you try your best if you get it that's fine but if you don't get it this is not end of the world there are so many other areas there are so many other fields there are so many other departments there are so many other opportunities then go for those things ali ibn abi talib instead of now sitting at home as a what you call a man that who is bitter rejected marginalized and isolated or to get out and to they were used to call there is a term wo jo murda zameene hoti thi na unko zinda karna there were lands which were not being uh, used for farming you go and you prepare those lands for farming and then you dig wells and bring water and then you plant the trees and then you plant the gardens and develop those lands ali became developer they denied him from fadak but he said so you can take fadak so i will that one garden is taken by you i will have 10 gardens of 
my own hand up i will not just sit here and keep weeping and crying and only for that one fadak i will have my own so this is how amirul mu'minin got busy in these kind of activities on site amirul mu'minin include recruited some students some companions that ali wants to teach them quran ali wants to teach them hadith ali wants to teach them islam ali wants to train them for the next generation the teachers of islam the sources of islam ali produced the scholarship and his scholars he didn't waste a minute time flies 25 years went by and those who had abandoned him now they are begging him to come out we are ready to do bayat on your hand there is no one else who can rescue muslim umma today because usman's dead body is there in intersection they are not even allowing to bury him and there is no one in muslim umma who can save islam and muslims today oh ali please come and take this khilafat 25 years later after going everywhere finally they are coming back to ali with the request that please accept this khilafat this was something that i wanted to say in the beginning to bring you to that point which i want to bring on behalf of shahid mutahri you know one of the greatest scholars of our time was shahid mutahri a faqih a mujtahid a philosopher a teacher a professor author speaker and one of those saints he has written two works about imam ali i will not get into the details but i just want to introduce two works of shahid mutahri about imam ali then you can do your own readings you can study it at your own one book which is actually these are four speeches of mutahri which he delivered in husainia irshad in tehran those speeches are compiled now as a book under the name jazibai ali wa dafai ali about 4 5 years before i had discussed this topic and my audiences didn't like the translation of that word dafa jaziba you know it is from jazb attraction meaning the attractions of ali and dafa is opposite of that and they didn't like this word <laughs> so i don't know if there is a better word i had asked them you find me a better word i will use that but nobody brought me a better word for that but in dictionary it is repulsion ali had very strong personality very dynamic personality very powerful personality on one hand he would attract people so many people would get attracted to ali and they would admire ali and they would stand with ali and they would support ali and then there was also some characteristics of ali were such that people of certain backgrounds would not take it they would leave ali they would just run away from ali they would not like to be with ali and they would like to actually go and oppose ali and fight ali and this is what shahid mutahri says 
He says, basically, there are four kind of people. There are some people in society who have no jaziba and who have no dafia. They are very homeopathic kind of personalities. They live among people, nobody admires them, nobody cares about them, nobody likes them, nobody loves them, nobody dies for them. And also they are so bizarre and turkey kind of people that if they are not there, nobody misses them. Nobody thinks that, oh, that brother who was great brother, why he is not there? Nobody misses them, nobody cares them. Nobody has any problem with them. Nobody hates them. Nobody talks against them. No gossip against them. No kind of backbiting against them. Nobody goes against them. Shahid Mutari says, Sabse bekar log ye hote. <laughs> Because they don't have any position. They don't take any, they don't stand for anything. They go with every wind. They just, they are pleasers. They try to please everyone and they stay away from the trouble. And when you stay away from trouble, then you are never going to be a noble individual. Nobility comes with troubles. If you want to be a noble individual, you have to take some challenges in your life. You have to stand for some things in your life. You have to support something, you have to oppose something. But if you are neither one, then you are a vegetable kind of human being. No, I am not going to call anyone vegetable human being. Everyone can grade themselves at their own. Then Shahid Mutari says there are people that who have jaziba, 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 but no dafia whatsoever. Jo sab ko beta dete. Wo peer jo sab ko beta de. Uze kehte hain jaziba, jaziba, jaziba. People who are very sweet. Followers of that, uh, what was Dale, Dale Carnegie. How to become popular among people. How to win hearts of people. Populist people that who try to please everyone, to agree with everyone and to just win the hearts. But they are never going to say no. They are never going to disagree with you. They are never going to oppose something. These are the people, he says, they say, there are some people of that kind. Then he says, there are people opposite to this. They don't have talent of attracting anyone, but they are master of making everyone run away. <laughs> Allah bachai is ke logon se. They don't have the honor of winning the hearts. They, don't, they cannot make people friends, but they are master of making enemies. And then they will claim that they are, it is just because they say such bolte. They say sir, voice such bolte. Or dunya me koi such ni bolta. They will say that because we are the people who tell the truth. That's why nobody likes us. Third type. Then Shahid Mutari says there is a fourth group of people who have attraction and who have this repulsion. They make friends, but at the same time, they make enemies. They support, they oppose, they choose, they reject, they agree, they disagree. They have these both kind of abilities in them. And they are the best of mankind. They are the most useful people. These are the people that who can reach to those nobilities. Then he says, this 
attraction and repulsion also is has on certain degrees some people their attraction they can attract only two friends some people their attraction is they can attract 20 people some people god has given them this ability they can attract 200 2000 2 million people they have that kind of ability to attract the hearts then so it is it varies with different people some people their attraction is the e if he says weak some people their attraction is qawi strong similarly this dafa are weak and qawi then he says ali was one of those people that whose jaziba was also very strong and his dafa was also very strong no man had friends like the friends which ali had and nobody had enemies like enemies which ali had ali had the best friends in this world when you compare his friends with others and Ali had the worst enemies if you compare his enemies with others enemies and that is because of his personality that is because of Ali what Ali stands for who is Ali what is agenda of his life how much committed he is with his agenda how long he wants to go how far he wants to go that makes Ali that person that who has Jaziba at the highest and Dafi'a at the highest. Then Shahid Mutahri has a note. He says, I know that some of you, my readers, my listeners, if you have Jaziba and Dafi'a both, uh, you can say that, yes, Alhamdulillah, I am blessed. I have Jaziba and I have Dafi'a. He says, before you reach to that conclusion, I want to just tell you, see what kind of people you have attracted and what kind of people you have made them to run away from you. That determines actually your personality. It's not enough to attract or to make them run away from you the quality of those people matters what kind of people you have been attracting if you attracted Abu Zar Ghifari if you have attracted Salman Farisi if you have attracted Meqdad if you have attracted Ammar Yasir if you have attracted Malik Ashtar if you have attracted like Kumail Ibn Ziyad Nakhi then you can say that you have this attraction which is a positive attraction and if you have made run away people like Muawiyah people like Amr As and that kind then you can say that yes I have great dafia but if you are opposite to that then there is no point to celebrate so my brothers and sisters many of us who are followers of Ali and again this is a line from Shahid Mutahri in that book he says many of us who claim to be his followers we don't know who Ali was we don't know who Ali was and we are not ready to be like Ali we are not ready to act like Ali we are not there we are not they are to react like Ali. And if Ali comes today again, most of us who are saying, who are making the claim that we are with Ali, sooner or later, we will leave him also as the people of Kufa and Iraq had finally left him. They were with him 
at one time. This, this Abdul Rahman ibn Muljam was one of the Shias of Ali. I don't know how many of you know that. He was one of those Shias of Ali. He fought in the battle of Jamal under the standard of Ali against Aisha, against Talha, against Zubair. And he fought against Muawiyah in the battle of Siffin. And he was in the party of Ali. And then what happened? The same individual, Abdul Rahman bin Muljam, turns away from Ali, leaves Ali, not only leaves Ali, but comes and takes the life of Ali and becomes Ashkal Ashkia. This Shemr bin Zil Joshan was one of the Shias of Ali Muhammad. He was one of those soldiers of Ali and then see how he turns and then what he becomes and then what he does in Karbala was there anybody worse than Shemr was there anybody worse than this Abdul Rahman ibn Muljam at one time they were with Ali but then one after another, one after another, one after another, people start leaving Ali, abandoning Ali. Shari Shariyati had written a book, Ali or Ali ki tanhaiya. Ali became tanha. Do you think that he didn't have the ability to retain people or to keep people with him? Or there was something wrong with him? No, there was nothing wrong with him. But the point was, Ali had a direction in his life. Ali had an agenda in his life. Ali had principles in his life. Ali was a man of principles. And he was not ready to compromise on those principles. Ali was not a populist man to go with wind and to maintain the public relations. Ali was a man of principles. And that's why he was not even accepting this Khilafat when they came to offer him. He said, go away and give it to somebody else. This is not my time. The society has become corrupt, full of corruption. Now when everything is upside down and everything is totally changed now you come to me and ask me to fix it to fix it what are you going to support me or are you going to be with me will you be able to take the justice because I am not going to make the distinction between one class of people or the other class of people friends or enemies Adl is Adl I don't want to share our personal experiences but even this little masjid, this little center which we are running, we have experience that when you do justice, people don't like. People have expectations. People think that they deserve certain roles, certain positions, certain respect, certain recognition, certain acknowledgement. And then, if you don't do that as they expect, and if you end up disappointing them, or deciding against them, then all of a sudden you see, your fans, the people who are used to kiss your hands, the people who are used to bow down in front of you, all of a sudden you see them, totally different people. While we are not like Ali, our Adil is not Adil Ali. Ali's Adil was too strong and too strict. And finally what happened? That they say Ali was killed by the sword of his own Adil, his own justice. Muawiyah was used to bribe 
Muawiyah was used to buy people. Muawiyah was used to give people money from the treasury, from right and left. Ali would not do that. Ali would ask Hisab and Hisab of even pennies. Even pennies you have to be accountable. Two gentlemen came to speak with him. They had some requests. When in evening they came to see Ali, Ali asked them, you came for the, is it official matter, the government matter or it is personal? They say it is personal. So that candle or that lamp which was burning, so Ali turns it off. It became dark. Ali says, yeah. Uh, they say, why did you turn it off? Say, because this was from Baitul Mal. This was for the government. This was the, for the official business. You came for personal thing. So, please go ahead. I am still able to listen to you. The, who were these? Talha and Zubair. So, Talha and Zubair, when they realized that he is not ready to even give this much from Baitul Mal, so how he is going to give us treasury? His own brother, Akhil, and his older brother, Bade Bhai, Akhil, and he is blind also. He comes to Imam Ali, I have a big family. I need more from Baitul Mal. You are, whatever you are giving to everyone, that doesn't suffice me. They say that Ali asked for some fire, coal, and asked Akil to bring his hand forward. He didn't put that fire on the hand of that blind man, his own old brother, to burn his hand, but he took the fire too close to the hand of Akil that he felt the warmth of that. Oh, what, what do you want to do? You want to burn me? Ali says, you want to burn your brother in hellfire? And you are afraid of this little fire? I am not going to give you more. I will give you only what I am giving to everybody else. They say his younger daughter borrowed some jewelry from Baitul Mal for one wedding. And it came to attention of Imam Ali. Imam Ali sent someone to ask Umm Kulthum to bring this jewelry back to Baitul Mal. Baba, I have borrowed it. I will just return it by this night when I will come back. But no, this jewelry belongs to every Muslim. You have no special rights on borrowing it. So Adle Ali, my brothers and sisters, Ali is known for his knowledge. Ali is known for his courage. Ali is known for his bravery. Ali is known for his uh, eloquence. Ali is known for his wisdom. Ali is known for, known for his ibadat and more so for his Adl. And finally, what happens? You know it. I will not get into the second book because time is up. So my brothers and sisters, Ali faced these three groups. Naqiseen, Qasiteen and Marikeen. Naqiseen were the people like Talha and Zubair who made the bayat but then they broke it. Qasiteen are the people like Muawiyah and Sham who went against him and they rebelled against him. And Marikeen were these Khawarij. And Shahid Mutari says one of the biggest problems which, which Imam Ali faced, that was the problem and fitna of these Khawarij, who were people who came out from his own camp. Just last one liner and then I recite Masaib. The problem with these Khawarij was these were too much in Ibadat 
but they had very little knowledge and understanding of Islam. They were too much in practice but too little understanding. So in the time of Abu Bakr or Umar or Usman, they never invested resources in educating these new converts to Islam. They just taught them jihad as tablighi jamaat today brings people in, next day they go to do tablighi. They don't know anything of Islam and they are doing tablighi. So these people were jahil but they were muqaddas. They had signs here for sajdas. There were signs on their knees, on their hands for long sajdas, ibadat. They had memorized Quran, they memorized surahs, they memorized so many ayat, so many duas. People that who would spend their whole night in ibadat. These people got tricked by Muawiyah and by other people that who were deviated and misguided them in a way that they abandoned Ali, they left Ali to their view the best man with they were supporting now has become the worst man. They started declaring Ali has become kafir. The fatwa kufr, takfir. Why I am saying that? Because we are facing this fitna again now in the Muslim world. This takfir, takfiri groups, this Daesh, these Taliban, these Boko Harams and all these people in different parts of the Muslim world, they are again khawarij of this day and this time. Their Islam is very, very like a shallow Islam. They have no understanding of Islam. They have no understanding. They are not sophisticated. They are not highly educated. They just memorize Quran, memorize ayat, memorize du'as and then they are given some brainwashing and then they start cutting throats of people. Blowing masajid, going and blowing and exploding bombs. These were the khawarij. People that who became Muslim but they were not taught Islam properly. And when Ali comes in the government, so from the very beginning he is put into these wars and that chaos he doesn't have time to go and educate them all you understand their mentality they went to Mecca and have a meeting in Masjidul Haram to make this decision of killing Ali and killing Muawiyah and killing Amr bin As they said since it is a very sacred decision which we are making and trying to save Islam and give the best service to Islam so we have to convene this meeting in Masjidul Haram nine people from these Khawarij they gather in Masjidul Haram and they decide they say all the fitna and all the problems today are because of these three people Ali, Muawiyah and Amr As And these are not the people from the followers of Muawiyah. These are the followers, ex-followers of Ali. Sometimes people, as I always say, they become more Ali than Ali. Those are very problematic. When people become more Ali than Ali, they had their sense of piety was now such that they are more pious than Ali. They are more concerned about Islam more than Ali. And they have to do something. And in order to do something, they have to go and kill Ali. So this man, Abdul Rahman bin Muljam, he takes the responsibility that I will go and I will assassinate Ali. And all three of them, they picked the date, month of Ramadan, and then a shab -e qadr because they want to get more sabab. 
they want to say that their sawab gets multiplied if they will do this service to islam in month of ramadan and if they will do in laylatul qadr this is when people turn around and when they go to the other extreme this is what happens this abdur rahman bin muljam he comes to kufa some of his friends go to syria some of his friends go to egypt on the same night muawiya didn't show up in the masjid he sent somebody else somebody else came as substitute to lead the prayer so he got little bit uh, injured but muawiya survived because he was not in the masjid amras was attacked but he survived and then what happened in kufa abdur rahman bin muljam comes he makes his friends his connections in kufa he gets some support he gets some buddies at this at the night of 19th he comes and he attacks on ali when ali is in his prayer in masjid kufa today in kufa in masjid kufa on 19th day when the time of that time comes all of sudden the red light comes on and there is a voice coming in the mihrab of masjid kufa qad qutila amirul mu'minin the jibril shouted qad tahaddamat arkanul huda wa qutila aliyun al murtada aliyun murtada gets strike on his head he sits down his companions come forward they help him they take him to his home shahid mutahri mentions that ali was there on his this death bed for about 45 hours and he says these 45 hours of the life of ali are the final phase of the life of ali where ali is not concerned about his own pain he is all concerned about umma he is all concerned about community he is all concerned about islam and he started making wasiyat after wasiyat wasiyat after wasiyat wasiyat after wasiyat on the night of this 21st of uh, ramadan in evening that doctor came to see the wound of ali they say that bandage which was on the face of ali and the head of ali it was yellow in color and the face of ali and that bandage their color was the same same yellow and pale color of the face of ali and that bandage he opened the bandage he looked into the wound and he said ya ali if you have any wasiyat please go ahead and do your wasiyats because it is now part of your body and you are not going to survive from this the name of wasiyat came behind the curtain there were ladies who were listening what this doctor was saying to ali ibn abi talib they started crying and here they started crying and ali sends the message oh my daughters please keep quiet i don't want to hear your voices of cry while i am still around and i am still alive please be patient so when those ladies started crying then what happened so ali this doctor went out women were given the opportunity to come and see imam ali they spent some time with imam ali then companions who were sitting outside at the door they sent the request and they said can we come and see our maula at this last moment can we come and see our maula so then they were given the opportunity to come and see their maula so sometime these turns when one after another women and children came then companions came then women and children came and then women came then my brothers and sisters 
Ali started calling his sons. Ali started calling all his sons and he made a wasiyat. They say he took everybody's hand and he put their hands in the hand of Hassan e Mujtaba. In the hands of Hassan e Mujtaba and he says all of you are now going to be in the custody and in the leadership of Hassan e Mujtaba and Hassan e Mujtaba these are your brothers these are your followers these are your supporters please take care of them but then what happened I am sure you know you know that's why you are crying all of sudden Abul Fazl al Abbas stands up and he goes to his mother Umul Banin and he says mother my father has put my brother's hands in the hands of Hassan e Mujtaba but he didn't give my hand in the hand of Hassan e Mujtaba and is, did I did something wrong why my father is not making wasiyat about me Umul Banin comes puts her hands on the feet of Imam Ali and she he says, Mawla, I understand all of these are your sons and you are their father. But did my Abbas uh, disappoint you or did my Abbas did something wrong? Mawla Ali opens the eyes and he says, Kyo? Kya baat hui? Kaha Mawla, Abbas is crying and he is saying, my hand was not given in the hand of Hassan. And here Mawla, when he hears, he says, no. Now call Hussein. Call Hussein. From one side Hussein was called. From other side Abbas is called. And then Imam, what he did? He put the hand of Hussein in hand of Abbas. And he said, Abbas, I won't be there. But you have to cover me. You have to be there. And you have to protect son of prophet. This is Hussein. You you are my son and he is son of Muhammad. He is son of Fatima. He is son of Fatima and Abbas. You sacrifice yourself but save Hussain ibn Ali. My brothers and sisters, all this is done and then they say it was little, oh little late than midnight. This night, little more than midnight when Ali passes away Ali ki roo is dunia se parwaz kar gai aur ghar ke andar aam taur pe to aise mauke pe giriya hota hai na nohe hote hain matam hota hai magar Ali ki family ki majboori dekho ke Ali ki betiyon ke dil se khun nikal raha hai lekin nohe ki awaz buland nahi kar sakti ro nahi sakte is liye ke shahir mein kisi ko khabar na ho jaye خبر باہر نہ نکل جائے فوراں رات و رات علی کے جسم کو غسل دیا گیا فوراں غسل دینے کے بعد علی کی وسیعت کے مطابق علی کا تابوت تیار کیا گیا اور اس تابوت کو اٹھانے کے لیے یا علی کے بیٹے ہیں یا علی کے پانچ اور چھے خاص صحابی ہیں جو اس کو اٹھاتے ہیں اور اٹھا کے ایک ویرانے میں لے جاتے ہیں ایک ویرانہ جو آج نجف ہے اور جہاں پہ مولا کی قبر ہے وہاں پہ لے جا کے دفن کرتے ہیں اور دفن کر کے قبر کا نشان مٹا دیتے ہیں کہ کسی کو پتا نہ چلے کہ علی یہاں دفن دفن ہوئے ہیں یہ صرف خاندان کے اندر خبر رکھی گئی کس کے ڈر سے خارجیوں کے ڈر سے کہ خارجی آ کے مولا کی میت کو قبر سے نکال کے کہیں میت کی بے حرمتی نہ کریں علی کو اتنا ڈر تھا اپنی میت کی بے حرمتی کا کہ اس کو ویرانے میں رات کی تاریکی میں دفن کروایا گیا تابوت اٹھایا گیا مگر کوئی نوہا نہیں تھا کوئی مرسیہ نہیں تھا کوئی ماتم نہیں تھا بیٹیاں خاموش بیویاں خاموش بچے خاموش بیٹے خاموش دل رو رہے تھے مگر مو سے آواز نہیں نکال سکتے تھے کہ کسی کو پتا نہ چل جائے کہ علی کی میت جا رہی ہے آج ہم
ہم علی کا تابوت اس لیے لاتے ہیں کہ ہم ان کی حضرت کو پورا کریں اور اس تابوت کو کندوں پہ اٹھا کے علی کے بیٹوں علی کی بیٹیوں علی کی اولاد کو بتائیں کہ جو موقع تمہیں نہ ملا آؤ علی کا بطول آؤ علی کا تابوت ہم اٹھاتے مسلے پر 
रो रो के अली क्यों लेते हैं जैनब का नाम मुसल्ले पर रो रो के अली क्यों लेते हैं जैनब का नाम मुसल्ले पर क्या याद अली को आता है बाजार शाम मुसल्ले पर रो रो के अली क्यों लेते हैं जैनब का नाम मुसल्ले पर रो रो के अली जख्मी सर से रोते थे नमाजी सफ में खड़े किस तरह हसन ने रो रो कर की फजर तमाम मुसल्ले पर रो रो के अली क्यों लेते हैं जैनब का नाम मुसल्ले पर रो रो के अली क्यों लेते हैं जैनब का नाम पर क्या माँ की तरह लेने तुमको मस्जिद में चली आए जैनब बाबा को जाक मुसल्ले पर रो रो के अली है रो रो के अली याद आया जख्मी पहलू जब याद आया जख्मी पेशानी भूल गया जहरा की मुसीबत मुसल्ले पर जख्मी पहलू जब याद आया जख्मी पेशानी भूल गया जहरा की मुसीबत पर रोया मजलूम इमाम मुसल्ले पर रो रो के अली रो रो के अली क्यों लेते हैं ये पहली फजर है जैनब की सजदे में सुकू मिलता ही नहीं दिल डूबता है मुसल्ले पर रो रो के अली रो रो के अली अलहमद लहू में डूब गया 
उम्मत से मिला है माला को कैसा इन आम मुसल्ले पर रो रो के अली जो कहता रहा अशाम शाम मुसल्ले पर रो रो के अली क्यों लेते हैं जैनब का नाम मुसल्ले पर रो रो के अली लोगों ये जनाजा है इस्लाम के बानी का गाज हो रहा है करबल की कहानी का आवाज हो रहा है करबल की कहानी का आगाज हो रहा है लोगों ये जनाजा है इस्लाम के बानी का गाज हो रहा है करबल की कहानी का आगाज हो रहा है बीबी ने कहा बाबा करबल में चले चले आना मंजर मैं दिखाऊंगी अकबर की जवानी का लोगों ये जनाजा है इस्लाम के बानी का गाज हो रहा है करबल की कहानी का आगाज हो रहा है चले आना मंजर मैं दिखाऊंगी अकबर की जवानी का लोगों ये जनाजा है इस्लाम के बानी का गाज हो रहा है आगाज हो रहा है जाएंगे बाजू भी पास बाबा के कट जाएंगे बाजू भी पास बाबा के तीरों से होगा छलनी मशकी जब पानी का लोगों ये जनाजा है इस्लाम के बानी का गाज हो रहा है करबल की कहानी का आगाज हो रहा है करबल की कहानी का रोते थे फरिश्ते भी था जो समाल रिजा रोते थे फरिश्ते समाल रिजा ताबूत उठ रहा है इमरान के जानी का लोगों ये जनाजा है 
اسلام کے بانے کا آغاز ہو رہا ہے کربل کی کہانی کا آغاز ہو رہا ہے بکھرے گا کربلا میں قاسم کے سر کا سہرا بکھرے گا کربلا میں قاسم کے سر کا سہرا خوشیاں سمیٹ لے گا عالم و ویرانی کا لوگو یہ جنازہ ہے اسلام کے بانی کا آغاز ہو رہا ہے آغاز ہو رہا ہے تا حشر میرے مالا مشتاق رہو تیرا تا حشر میرے مالا مشتاق رہو تیرا مل جائے شرف مجھ کو اب تیری غلامی کا لوگو یہ جنازہ ہے اسلام کے بانے کا آغاز ہو رہا ہے کربل کی کہانی کا آغاز ہو رہا ہے کربل کی کہانی کا کٹ جائیں گے بازو بھی یا پاس با وفا کے کٹ جائیں گے بازو بھی یا پاس با وفا کے تیروں سے ہوگا چھلنی مشکی زو پانی کا لوگو یہ جنازہ ہے اسلام کے بانی کا آغاز ہو رہا ہے کربل کی کہانی کا آغاز ہو رہا ہے کربل کی کہانی کا اللہم صلی علی محمد و آل محمد جزاک اللہ برادر سسٹرز میں بی بی سیدہ فاطمہ زہرہ ایکسپٹ اور پھرسا ویل سارت دی امال ان جسٹ اباٹ فائیو منٹس سو کائنڈلی میک دی روز تو گیٹ ریڈی فور امال اف یو نیٹ تو ریفریش یو ودو کائنڈلی دو سو ایز ویل سارت ان جسٹ افیو منٹس ویل ہیو دی والنٹیئرز